Fentify was created with the vision of solving hard computational tasks and creating value with that. It was founded by me and my two co-founders, Alan and Nikolai. Uh, Nikolai is a professor of physics and has done research on quantum computing for 10, 15 years. So I came with a business background and sort of this network in, in business. And Alan is a computer scientist and has done 10 years of research in machine learning and, and algorithm design. So we're sort of bringing all that together, the, the classical computing piece that you need to make quantum computers efficient, the quantum computing piece, and then wrapping it all up in, in actually creating business value. We focus on problems within the space of optimization, within simulation, and within quantum chemistry. Everything we do is on the cloud. So as the quantum hardware matures, we are able to also transition parts of the solution where relevant to quantum hardware. Cloud computing is, is old news, but still not something that all companies at all do today. And, and HPC, sort of high-powered or high-performance cloud computing, is the next level. And many companies are not even starting to look at that yet. Uh, but the, the true power of the cloud is HPC to be able to fully scale up and scale down infrastructure as needed. So there's a very intimate relation between the HPCs and the quantum computers. The HPC, they run the big data stuff, and then the quantum computer takes care of the mathematical, really hard problems, and then you sort of interface the two with each other. And you also need HPCs to run error correction on quantum computers. And error correction means tracking uh, all the small errors that happen to your qubits when they run an algorithm on the quantum computer, and to measure those errors, the defect of them, and keep track of them and correct them, that requires massive classical computation. The most obvious application of quantum computing is quantum mechanics itself, in terms of molecules, chemistry and materials, to try and supercharge things like drug discovery and material science for maybe like the green revolution. But beyond that, there's a lot of uh, complex combinatorial problems that can potentially be solved much faster on the quantum computer within fields like transportation or finance or any kind of field that has these really big complex problems. From the chemistry point of view, that's my field, solving quantum chemistry equations, so Schrodinger equation for electrons is an exponentially complex problem to solve for classical computers. And this means that, uh, of course, being able to solve that with quantum computers will be extremely valuable for having a better understanding of how atoms interact. We are just launching our first product, which is a life science product for drug discovery, uh, where we have re-engineered, ready for quantum, what is called binding kinetics or unbinding kinetics calculation. It's something that's been really hard to do with, with classical computing previously, but where we've taken a route that is untraditional from where you usually, uh, the way you usually try to solve this problem, to be quantum ready. But this path has less, led us to a solution that is actually much better, up 100 times faster than today's best-in-class algorithms for, for unbinding kinetics. I think one of the main challenges with quantum computing today is that it's both it's sort of intangible and, and hard to describe exactly how it will look. And then at the same time, I think the industry, there's, there's this feeling that we're so close to doing something that's going to be amazing. It's not 10 years out, it's maybe one, two, three years out in the future where you'll start seeing the first bits of useful calculations from quantum computers. The big problems right now, I think, is finding or designing qubits with low enough errors, error rates, I mean that they actually keep their quantum states for long enough that we can use them for algorithms and run algorithms on them. Right now they tend to sort of lose their state because they are they're affected by noise from the environment. And then they, they go out of the particular quantum state that we put them in too fast in order for us to actually run the algorithm. At the moment there is hardware out there, but it's very expensive to produce. As a, as a result, it's relatively expensive to use even on, on the software side. It has become a, uh, an engineering problem rather than a theoretical problem now, so we know that, uh, that they work and we know that they will have a, um, an important impact. The challenge on the software front, I'd say, is that we identify the correct use cases in the various industries to make sure that the advances in hardware are reflected in, in the market as well. We're learning gradually that we can turn some classically known problems into uh, quantum algorithms, and that, that's sort of two parallel developments, right? At some point they will cross, and the hardware is just mature enough 
to meet the needs for the algorithms you've developed. And then when these, those two they meet, that's where you have the real practical quantum advantage. In Quantify, we've put together a very diverse team. We're more than 65 experts today. For quantum computing, you need experts in the quantum hardware. On top of that, you build quantum algorithms. You build it together with classical algorithms, so you need well, physics, physicists again for the quantum piece, computer scientists and mathematicians for, for sort of the, the normal computing, even though they're working closely together. It's one way of thinking of it. And then you need people that understand what we're going to use it for. So we have quite a few quantum chemists, where you need the full chain of competences to sort of be best at all the different steps. We have quite a few collaborations with academic institutions uh, all around Europe, I would say. They allow us to do long-term thinking together with the academic institutions in terms of how will quantum computing develop, how will the, the far future look, how will, what is the fault-tolerant algorithm landscape eventually when we get there. It also allows us to attract talent. I think the future for Quantify is hard to imagine because our original plan was to build a company of 25 people maybe in in, in, uh, in two years and it took us two years and now we're 65. So the growth has been explosive and if we look two years down the road, will we be 130? I don't know, maybe, if that's where the future takes us. I think the ultimate goal is to be one of the best companies in the world for actually making useful things with quantum computing. Mm -hmm.